For more on this, let's speak to Corruption Watch Executive Director David Lewis. Good evening, um, Dave. Thanks very much uh, for your uh, time. Well, just perhaps your take first on just what uh, we have seen over the past uh, three days. Well, you know, we are, this was always bound to start getting really interesting when the people who were directly implicated in, in corruption started to give testimony. And Agriti is the first directly implicated person to do this. And so, you know, he was in the room when all of this was happening. And that's uh, bound to be very much more interesting and sensational than people who are telling you what the effects of the corruption have been or drawing conclusions and inferences from facts. He knows the facts, and these are the real witnesses, the direct witnesses to corruption. And, you know, what has been revealed is outrageous. I mean, you think you lose your capacity for outrage, but fortunately we don't. Um, and that's partly a consequence of the fact that it gets more and more brazen and gross. And, you know, today I'll tell you this is about as bad as it gets, but frankly I fear that next week we'll hear something just as bad, if not worse. But it's, it's appalling. There's no other way to describe it. Well, I've seen, read uh, people making comparisons um, between the Guptas and now the Wetsons. Um, should we even be making that uh, uh, comparison? Or perhaps the question should be, how useful is that? No, I, I think that it is useful. You know, I, I, you know, I think that this is, a, you know, these are, are gross cases of the phenomenon of state capture where uh, uh, moneyed interests have captured you know, the decision-making apparatuses of the state. I mean, in the case of the Guptas, it was, it was more lucrative on a grander scale simply because the institution of the state that they effectively captured was the president, the presidency and the president. And that gave them widespread power over a whole range of governmental institutions, over anyone they wanted. Uh, the Bosasa uh, um, capture has been uh, slightly less ambitious than that because they didn't have the president directly in their pocket, although he crops up occasionally. I mean, so I think that... Well, it did crop up. Uh, I mean, there was uh, uh, an accession that um, uh, Gavin Watson uh, funded uh, former President Jacob Zuma's birthday celebrations for no, a good couple I of years. I didn't pick that up. Well, there you go. You know, so so... He, too, was engaged with that. But I think that, that you know, all there is, that the difference between the Guptas and the, and the Bosasa is probably a, a, a matter of scale, and, and, uh, and that's all. But what I do think they also have in common is that as much as there have been bona fide private sector institutions deeply engaged in corruption and in state capture, McKinsey, KPMG, SAP, uh, even a company like Trillion and Regiments, and they deserve to be treated with the full might of the law. The, the, uh, the Guptas and Bosasa are, are, not, um, are, are not bona fide private sector corporations. I mean, these are organized criminal enterprises. They might as well have been into the, into the heroin trade or into the, um, the human trafficking trade. They just happen to use uh, businesses as their platform for theft and looting. So, I, you know, while I think the private sector have got plenty to answer for, I don't think I would tar the whole private sector with the brush of the Guptas and Bosasa, because as I say, you know, it's like Tony Soprano from the famous uh, TV series was into the waste management business. Well, you know, waste management, yes. Bosasa were into facilities, yes. But, uh, but they were an organized criminal conspiracy. They weren't a, a, a bona fide business firm. I mean, when you see the scale of, you know, six million rand a month or something in, in bribes, every single contract they did, they got as a result of bribes. So I, I think that that's what the, how we can talk about. That's another reason how we can talk about the Guptas and the uh, and, and Bosasa in the same breath.
Now, I mean, the State Capture Commission, as the name suggests, is looking into everything in and around the state. And as you have just pointed out, um, over the past three days, we've heard uh, of how uh, the private sector, uh, I mean, we've heard of the private sector's involvement in corrupting um, the state to get uh, what they want. Is it a long one to really extend that to say maybe this, and especially when you hear names of Saudi um, Mutsuaneng, mm. for instance, uh, popping up, um, should we not extend this and start talking about or perhaps uh, going back to the issue of party political funding? You have a leader of a political party now having been implicated. We have seen over the past few months uh, leaders of other political parties throwing stones at the very state capture um, commission. Does this not bring back the whole issue of perhaps we need to look into party political funding? And <laughs> I mean, God forbid, it could well be that uh, this rot um, stretches further into, par uh, into party politics as well. Absolutely. I mean, I think, that, I think that we do need to look at that. Um, and I think that not only do we need to look at party political funding, we need to look at the funding of political campaigns of any sort whatsoever. Um, I, I think that that would go a long way towards, towards limiting the damage that has been caused. But, but, you know, above all, we need to look at prosecution and jail sentences, you know. Um, th there's, there's no amount of, of, of law that will stop uh, the likes of the of the uh, of the Bosasas and the and the and the Guptas, as I say, uh, you know, this is an organised criminal conspiracy. I mean, in the case of some of the other um, firms, I think that it would help, but they too need to face the full wrath of the law. I mean, even in this Bosasa thing, when you look at those extraordinary stories of money laundering, and they paid, you know, a large bottle store, they they. They paid them for liquor, and then they didn't get any liquor. They got money back in order to have cash to pay out bribes. I mean, those two need to be punished. There were chicken suppliers who they did the same thing with. And, you know, in the case of um, organizations like McKinsey that effectively facilitated the looting and, and participated in the looting of ESCOM, KPMG, which did what it did in, in, in SARS, SAP, which, what is, what it, which did what it did in Transnet. I mean, these companies need to be severely punished. And, uh, and that's what we need to do above all. Yes, the, the Zondo Commission should be looking at how this happened, uh, what happened, how it happened, and how to prevent it from happening in the future, and making recommendations regarding laws and regulations that are need to need to stop it. But above all, we need prosecutions, and maximum attention has to be paid towards identifying the lowest hanging fruit and going for them with all, with all that we have at our disposal, because that's really, I think, the only thing that will put a stop to this. Well, very briefly, Dave, before I let you go, we've run out of time. We're going into an election in a few months' time, and the stakes have never been higher. And as everyone knows, running an election campaign is a very expensive exercise for both for parties big and small. Is there something that can still be done, even at this late stage, uh, that can give us the transparency we need going into this election? In other words, uh, something that will ensure that uh, we do not turn around a few months after the election and find that actually state money has been used or promises were made for which, uh, uh, I mean, the public would have to pay at the end of the day. Look, I don't know if there's anything that we can do at law. I mean, I think the Party Political Funding Act has been passed, but there are regulations that are needed and institutions that need to be built that won't be in place by the time of the next elections. And so I think my understanding is the Party Political Funding is going to be unregulated. You know, what we can do is hold them to account. I mean, the ANC is said to have spent a, b a billion rand on the last local government elections. Why, did, why do they need to spend a billion rand? Um, you know, and I think that the public have got to hold the party to account for what it is they spend, for the lavishness of their, of their 
election campaigns. I think that's a place to start. And you and I, the media, civil society organizations, need to play a role in exposing what it is that they're doing to persuade people to vote for them. It's not their policies that are being foregrounded. It's the it's the lavish uh, um, events, election conferences. These kind of things need to stop. It's handing out freebies to voters. Uh, this needs to stop. Above all, there's no need to spend a billion rand on an election campaign. Um, if you truly can appeal to people on the basis of your record and your policies. You shouldn't have to spend a billion rands to put the icing on the top of that. Dave Lewis, that's why we're going to leave it. Thanks very much for your time this evening. He is, of course, the executive director of Corruption Watch.